Welcome to Rockcast. Dyson Production. What's up today on Rockcast? Hey, Hi. good buddy, good friend, ex guitar player, future guitar player. Mr. Jeff That's Hill. Right. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, everything's a maybe. That's right. Coming on the basement. Jeff's basement. Cooking with what? Jeff. Future guitar. Oh, no. Why are we breaking up? Jeff's kitchen. Jeff's kitchen. I was just talking to Joe about doing a, uh, when they left the Parks band, having a barbecue and having like up to five or however many people are allowed out. And having Jeff's Kitchen cook the barbecue for us. We need to drag you back into the podcast. Oh, hell yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm almost there. This this is probably the uh the beginning right here, baby. Thank you. Good. Thanks for having Good. me on. Yeah, we gotta drag you back out sometimes. It's weird how it just gets and then it's further and further away, and then you're like, uh, but yeah, you gotta get that spark and Dude, we had we had a good run there, especially once we got Joe involved and with all that, and now with the podcast show. And dude, you could become our resident well, cook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've been saying that. Wow. Um, but no, uh, that was my whole idea uh, towards the end of uh, the last leg of the basement was when we did that comedy competition of the cookies, and uh, I was like, you know what, this just it can't just be my friends blacking out every episode. <laughs> I was like, I got to get some talent in here. So, thanks, Chicker. Um, you know, trying comedy out for the first time, which was a blast. And yeah, I, I was going to ask you about that. Um, yeah. Um, I was like, holy shit. Now I know a handful of comedians, you being one, of course. And I was like, there's my talent right there. And keep it local. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And it's a lot to draw from. And and luckily for you, I mean, comedians are easy to get to do anything. They're starving for attention. And, you know, but yeah, no, right? that's, I'm basing Inherently. my whole thing off that. I just did one with Brock. I plan on doing one with everybody. I'm going to ask them all, like, you know, what was the worst heckle you had and make a video. Just hate the fucking editing part of it all, but well, whatever. that's the thing too. Every every comedian I've asked to be a part of the basement, no questions asked. Every single one has said yes. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they'll be on so, it. And you have such a point. dumb setup. Joe and I drool over your setup, dude, because you literally have a basement, uh, you know, and that room is such a man's room. You could have one corner set up for podcasting, another set up for band, another set up for fucking. A pool, pool table or something it's a big big awesome room yeah how's uh yeah how's, that, how's your normal cool life going like yeah are you guys you said uh, the parents staying there or i, I don't know no nope, parents are good thank god but yeah. uh yeah, it's been something you got to do been, every once in a while working uh uh, ironically, as millions of people are thrust out of work instantly, I actually had my best month ever, oh, wow. <laughs> sales-wise. Yeah. Go figure. Yeah. Congratulations. So it's just, Me too. Uh... Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. But no, everybody's buying a lot of weed. Apparently, uh, they need to smoke more because they're stuck at home all the time and playing a lot more video games and shit. So, yeah, I did good. Last night, I made 106 Absolutely. bucks in tips. Absolutely. It was crazy. What? Yeah, yeah, I got a, I got a good gig here, dude. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing just fine in the apocalypse. 106 bucks? God yeah. damn. Yeah, I usually average between 50 and 60. But yeah, other than that, really? Shit, dude. Right on. Yeah, fuck slinging food, man. I'm but yeah, other things. than that, I've been working on the music. That's a big one I wanted to talk to you about, too. I've been working on it and... Uh, so, little little story. Nick actually, the singer, came up with this uh, band name of Knights of the Golden Grommet. And, you know, I'm still partial, as you could guess. Um, 
But I do like the idea behind it because being the sick, twisted individual that he is, uh, if you Google Golden, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Anyways, he wanted it to be a sick joke, which it worked out perfect to see uh, a gay slur on a, a band version. So if you Googled our last show, can't remember what it was called, Metal Comes to Callow or some shit. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, you see right there at the top, Knights of the Golden Grummet. And, uh, you know, nobody knows that it's basically inferring, uh, you know, people getting their ass fucked. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Where I kind of actually somewhat like because nobody knows what the fuck it means. Anybody ever bothers to fucking look it up, they will be uh, surprised. Yeah. So, yeah, Knights of the Golden Grummet. Yeah. The mouthful, no pun intended. I guess it's not. <laughs> it's but, an uh, assful. Something full. Yeah, an assful. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, that uh, you guys sounded sick. I was impressed. It's good. Fucking, I don't know if a couple times I ever heard uh, uh, Brendan drum to that it was quite the improvement. <laughs> like, Yeah, yeah. I, I must say, Brendan has come leaps and bounds on his drum game. And, uh, you know, it always helps when your drums are mic'd up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Give me a dab. I just took a fat dab while well, I was waiting for you. These dad pipes look like oh, dad dude. pipes. <laughs> That's what I love about Oh, yeah. Them. If somebody doesn't know what they are. But, dude, for me, hitting a dab out of this is so much better because you get a small dab. You know, you're not fucking running around with a rig and shit. And right, you- and you don't got some $150 rig that you might break. So, you and I used to be in a band known as Split Skull. I've been noticing a lot of Split Skull shit popping up on your end. I'm hoping one day you and I will get to jam some something again, some sort of thrash something or another, any kind of music. Some some acoustic ballad shit would be dope too, dude. I think we could do, or maybe I could finally make my way into a joke band, you know, like something where we write funny fucking songs because you got a goddamn great sense of humor. Dude. You're one of the funniest people I know. Uh, but Jeff and I were in a band together. Uh, one of the members was a raging alcoholic douchebag that pretty much ruined the whole experience for everybody. I'm not going to say who, but we'll just leave it at, at that. And uh, But whatever. We learn from our mistakes, and we move on with our lives, unfortunately. Uh, that being Absolutely. said, we had some fucking amazing shows. Every show we did was off the hook great. We immediately went over every fan. We immediately fucking – we had a unique fucking Wes – whatever is going on in Wes's head. Headlined our first show. What's that? What? Headlined our first show. you damn right we did. <laughs> yeah, although that garage show we played was awesome too. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, where uh, pickles got picked up and slammed down on the floor by Andy. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. Shout out, Big Andy. Yeah, what was your favorite show out of all the ones we played? Um, I I gotta say my favorite show was the first show, and I I'll tell you why because I, I knew we were kick ass band absolutely, but. As you may remember, uh, our levels were, were a little bit off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> During practice, so um, and the I want to say the final few weeks, um, you know, for the whole set, <clears throat> which was kind of a mystery for me at least. You know, I know you and Wes have been talking, but um, the the most memorable part is, is when we first started headlining our first show and there was damn near 100 people there so you know there was that and then all of a sudden we could hear the rot and and what the rot can do and you know you had sent out the lyrics and i i can read your lyrics but obviously you know when you're talking about metal it's hard to imagine the cadence oh yeah yeah it's hard to take a word like fucking chain you know, or, or, and, 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 and uh, yeah. holy shit, you weren't lying, you're fucking showing. Yeah, I love what I do, man. I just, unfor- I've learned that I, uh, I've got to let, actually, I, I watched, I watched that set last yeah. night, actually. 
go. Dude, we had a unique and amazing sound. Like I said, whatever's going on in Wes's brain, it transcribes into beautiful fucking odd mixes of music. Like, dude, he was, and then you got jazzy ass fucking Dylan and, and you know, and you're a, you're a solid rhythm dude, man. And then when you've got the confidence, which I remember, one of my favorite shows was the one where you wore that mask because you, your, your whole body took on Jeff, the guitar player. Like, you could see it. You loved it. You were getting off on looking like a fucking psychopath terror. And it just transcribed your whole body. That was the first moment where I saw your stance actually develop almost like on stage where your foot went forward and you were like, I don't know that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were all good. Man. Not, not so stoic. Yeah. But That's yeah, with that being said, I, I know I've told you many times, first joined Split School, obviously, you know, four of the songs instrumentally were written already so i had to learn them but when i first showed up i couldn't even play the guitar standing up so i exponentially got better at guitar exponentially uh, yeah. in that year period it was fun to watch and uh yeah uh thanks to west uh because if you would have seen you know thankfully you came later in the band uh and I say because I was that bad. <laughs> you were really shy, but you know, <coughs> I get. <coughs> you, you, I don't know, man. You, you just, yeah, you, you. The reason you play guitar is that fun. I never got the impression from you. It's not like you didn't care. Like, I mean, obviously you were improving, so you were getting better. But you were just, you're always just chill, dude. Just like ah, I'm fucking playing in a metal band, and then yeah, you get well, better. Before and better. you. Before you came, before you came and before Dan came, we actually had this other bass player who would turn his shit way fucking loud. And then instead of, you know, dropping in on the rhythm, he would sit there and fucking try and noodle around, run scales during the middle of the song. And then yeah. I just seen this. He, he tried to, he tried, you know, he, he was basically trying to get me out of the band. And I even told him, I was like, I ain't coming back till that fucking guy's gone. Fuck <laughs> this, dude. You know, he doesn't understand. But uh, when you came along, I, I'll never forget the first thing you said to me. Must have been the second practice. We're standing outside, and I could just tell you were you just you were giving me that look. Like, you just weren't sure about me. And then you finally asked me, hey, are you a cop? <laughs> <laughs> You do kind of look like a I was cop, like, dude. no, oh, I'm not like a cop, you know, because I had the collared shirt and the bald head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the reason I'm always asked if I'm in the military, you know, I'm checking out somewhere. Hey, you got military discount? Oh, gee, why? Because I, you know, have barely any facial hair and I'm bald. You're built. Yeah. You're you're built like somebody that takes. Yes. You you build like somebody that takes people down. You carry it. I remember when we went to see uh, how you posted those pictures of, uh, man, I just saw those the other day, the Black Label Society show, but we're on the ferry and that guy fucking oh, squeezed yeah. past your car and rubs his nuts on your mirror and you're like, dude, you just put your nuts on my fucking mirror or whatever you say. That was hilarious. Dude, those, are, those are good, should I municipal fucking waste, dude? God. God, I hope we get to go to shows again someday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, Right. Yeah. Luckily, I got that black label show to happen. Dude, watch when when only fucking a hundred people could show up to a fucking show. The tickets are going to be like three hundred dollars a pop for, for like general admission. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's potential. Here. Yeah. Well, considering black labels, twenty five bucks. You know, fifty. I'll do it. Dude, I want one where I go and pay like the four hundred dollars for the whole fucking experience. You know, where I got a picture with like Phil and Selma, like, <laughs> like just once in my life. I mean, what oh, am I yeah. doing this for, dude? You know, that's my whole life has been music, and yet I've never right. treated. I've treated myself to piles and piles of cocaine. You know, two nights of party, and I could have fucking met <laughs> met Philip and Selma at a concert. Got a brand new T-shirt, a signed album. You know, drumstick, all that shit. I just wasted my life fucking fucking off, man. Oh, it pisses me off. Now, now I'm eating eating like fucking shit. Uh, anyways, 
Uh, how are the kids, dude? One thing I really respect about you is you're dedicated, not to sound corny, but you're a good dad. You, uh, you know, you didn't let things interfere with it. You did let an entire metal van move into your house. Uh, but I do believe that that kind of helped your kids definitely look at being more creative in their life. Writers, that is a force to be reckoned with, that kid. And then I get to see the little girl coming up behind him like, hey, <laughs> And you go and you're, you're do you, uh, she, is she in any sports Absolutely. yet or anything? I know you, you coach him in football. No, and she's football. only three, but, uh. Your God, dude. Oh, yeah. Basketball. It. Yeah, the, the kids are all great. But, yeah, when, when the rot was around a little more, uh, we all jokingly called Ryder mini rot because, uh, I still do. he absolutely wants to be a singer. On the yeah. fucking drums, dude. I'm gonna say though, on drums, he's got a real, a real aptitude for it, and a lot of that is even though he's just at first, he's just a kid and he's bashing them, but when he actually gets into it, sometimes every once in a while, you're like, oh shit! And then I remember I came back that next time, and the kid was holding down a decent little beat. He's just a Vinnie Paul though. He fucking beats the shit out of those drums like they're his enemy. <laughs> you ever heard Absolutely. Vinnie play? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, no, man, respect, dude. I don't know oh, absolutely. But we got to get you back into the podcasting thing uh, for sure because, you know, I mean, dude, you've got an interesting way to look at it. You're almost more like a morning show kind of DJ podcast. You make it exciting. This motherfucker calls fucking Pakistan or whatever. Me and Brendan, his producer, who I should show, shout out to Brendan Gosling. Is that how you say it? Wait. That's good enough. Okay, look, I got that. I was like, wait, isn't that a UFC fighter? Uh, but uh his producer he's actually got a producer guy that does it and you guys the show is just picking up steam i mean Jones okay the with your little segments and then that that crazy shit you call this dude this guy is at work brendan and i we okay why don't because i'm getting it all fucked up what happened you called pakistan or iran or yeah so we're not all this uh, Iran war with Iran talk started here a few years ago. Um, I just thought in my head, you know, the world's connected via Facebook. I Iranian people are on Facebook. Um, and it's called Life in Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia being the uh, controversial, controversial state that it is, a lot of uh, Islamic countries comment on that thread and I started looking for Iranian people and uh, I wanted to just chat with them but they were here immediately you know what I mean yeah just reach out as a human being it was really nothing more than that other than I thought it would be funny as fuck um, so uh, I found out that I couldn't call any Iranian people absolutely none so I just started going down the list who do I call next? And finally called, uh, I can't remember his name. Anyways, yeah. his, uh, his profile said Indian. He was actually an Indian guy. Um, and then uh, come to find out, he was in his work truck in Pakistan. Yeah, it was, yeah. Brandon and I, you watch us. I start fucking like trying to retreat from the camera. We feel like you're like going to commit treason or something. That's that's oh, okay. I know. Isn't that, no, but you know what you did there? You proved something. In hindsight, even when I was feeling like a fool and like being like, you're a coward, Dennis, get back in there. What you did there was beautiful, man, because that dude loved it. He was so he was so cool. His, he yeah, was he was like, work. holy shit, dude. Yeah. The white devil. Like, it's real. <laughs> dude, that was cool, man. Yeah. So you need to get you need to get back out there, dude. You have great ideas, and then Joe and I and you, we we have a triangle there that's really good, and uh, we got to pull Joe out of his Call of Duty addiction. He's getting in there deep right now. I don't know if he's gonna come back out, but uh, that was that would. What's that? What? He's 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 on the the Xbox nowadays. Yeah, he's hooked. He's hooked. Mind you, I'm not no slouch now that I got the Xbox 360. Fuck, I hate my life. <laughs> Playing Far Cry 4 over here. So, <clears throat> you guys, uh, you still jamming the band? Do you guys have plans to continue that? The nights, I mean. Absolutely. We got five songs down. 
Um, what it feel like? Pretty to play solid your, songs. Um, your, your second live band, man. That's different than the first one. The second one, you've actually got a little experience. You're like, all right, I know what could happen. Everything happened to you the first few times. I can't remember the date we played, but the uh, the inception of the band was literally two months prior to that show. And Nick's buddy was Nick's buddies with Jacob, and Jacob hit him up, wondering if we could fill a slot. And we had barely a song and a half written. And uh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful, and it, it can't understand a fucking word Nick's saying, but or yeah, but whatever. Well, but that's the way everybody <laughs> likes people to sing these days, I guess. <laughs> well, another. Uh, Another thing that came from the basement, uh, you know, we we started doing stand-up comedy from the basement, met all these comedians from the basement. We were sitting down, writing down funny song titles on the basement, and then Nick finally chimed in, hey, I got a drum set. And we're like, what? You got a fucking drum set? Get that shit over here right now. And then, you know, that mixed with Brendan getting so much better so quickly, um nick talked us into doing that show and uh that's awesome it, it went pretty well i, I must awesome. say those all your riffs you write those riffs yourself oh yeah that's all jeff dude yeah they're all me well what else man so family's doing all right in the quarantine all that bullshit oh yeah i mean we're fucking usually in the house anyway yeah. but uh the weather don't get nice for another month anyways so you know okay do yeah. i want to kill them absolutely but yeah. you know lions you know. are young for a reason <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah, Daniel, you need to get back out there and do some comedy uh your sense of humor is dark and depraved and you like you like fucking with people i mean you are really good at it you really are and i think you just need to get back into the comedy immediately and not give that up. For your first show, I mean, you did great, man. You know, you're a natural performer. So, yeah, dude. I think it'd be a good one. Oh, yeah, I'd absolutely. I got I got probably... I got three minutes right now. Dude, we could I do would, a virtual... Uh, feel comfortable open micing. We could do another rematch between you and fucking uh, dude and fucking Brendan. We could do one over this. With like a moderators and everything, dude. Bro, I already I already put that offer on the table, and uh, I think uh, I think some people are scared. But with that being said, you know, uh, I, I wouldn't be opposed to doing. Uh, well, we'll go figure. Right after we do that competition, Cookie starts doing comedy competitions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they always do. But that was money in here, so one or two a year. Yeah, the. Uh, yeah, man, it sucks. But uh, dude, we need you back in the scene because you we were we were starting to kind of move forward there. We lost one of our wheels, which is Jeff's basement. Oh yeah, yeah. You're not the only one that's been uh, suggesting that uh, I get back in the game. Joe's pretty good at uh, pushing those buttons as well. Um, yeah. And ironically, uh, the basement that had Joe on it was uh, the most viewed basement of all time. So, Dude, um, you know how it is. If you cross, even if you only got five viewers each, that's five viewers that each extra, and then they got a couple people, and you build up all these interviews. Man, I'm getting fifty views, sixty views on each and every one of them. So that's why I like doing it, and it helps people get out there and promote shit. Uh, yeah, you're gonna have to send me some information. So if I were to bring you uh, some of my magic, yeah, would it be at the shop? Yeah, you could come by the studio, dude. I mean, if, I, I mean, if you risk your health, I could put a mask on. I've got masks. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I'm in the public. You know, when I work five days a week fucking dealing weed to people. So, like, if anybody's going to get anybody sick, it's me. But I haven't heard of any cases in Kitsap, to be honest with you, uh, in, in our area here anyways. We seem to be cool. If everybody just realized that, you know, just chill a little bit longer. I've been writing a bit about how fucking sad it is that we can't just take a couple couple months off as a nation and it not disrupt our entire lives. Like, what's that say about right. thinking ahead? Let the earth heal a little bit. 
Oh my God. As well you, can as your soul. I, you can see the Eiffel Tower from Paris for the first time in like 30 years. The Himalayans are clearing up. I mean, Mother Nature just needed a little bit of time to kick her filters in. She'll clean us right out, dude. I think she's trying to right now. But uh, yeah, man, you're and yours. That old, uh, that old Joe Rogan for the mold on the sandwich. It is just one of the best analogies ever. What was some of the uh, everything that you thought that you know was a lie? Life is brutal. Death is certain. It was dude. a lie. Yeah, dude. Fuck, dude. We had some great fucking songs, man. Fucking great songs. Running to the pit, dude. That song cannot die. I'm gonna see if Wes will send me the tracks and let me record my vocals. What happened? He went quiet. Oh, oh, there you are. Somebody's calling me. Oh, um, well, you want to wrap this up? Nah, man. All right, dude. So we could get, expect to see you again out here in the podcast land. Yeah. Yeah. I want you know what next time. This summer. Let's get a. Uh, Let's get you and Brendan on the next one. Okay, for yeah. sure. That way we got the, the actual... Hey, a couple quick shout-outs. Go ahead, go. Shout-out, Rodcast. Love the show. I watch it all the time, actually. Um, shout-out, Dracalo. Check out the new album. Um, shout-out, Jeff. House, Jeff's Basement Kitchen, um, Rick Ruck Foodie. If you're into uh, watching people eat food, Rick Ruck Foodie is a good one. Um, check out Kitsap Connection and, of course, uh, the podcast, Kitsap Podcast with Joe Rogers. That's a good one. New episode coming out uh, probably before this comes out. So in the, in the future, we've already watched it. Yeah, I just did one today. I went over there, did that, came back here, did this. I'm also writing a song that you should check out. It's cool. You can tell me what the chords are so I can learn to play it on a piano. Yeah, give me your shit, dude. Yeah, I can send it to you. All right, Jeff. Jeff's basement. I love you, brother. We are not done yet. Uh, yeah. Love you too, dude. You have extra food. I will eat it because I'm so sick of microwaving everything. So much salt. And, uh, yeah, dude, we'll do another one of these. Uh, I would like to get another one with you with uh, Brendan in it and flush it out. Once I pay for this, uh, lots of people will do full long ones, but we've only got a time limit here so long. So, do 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 uh, gotcha. That's going to do it for right now, my friend. Thank you very much. I will edit this into some cool stuff. I'll get some footage from the band in there. Oh, it's going to be a nightmare. All right, man. <laughs> but as far as the conversation goes, I don't think I'll have to do a lot of that which saves me a lot of time. Everybody give it up for Jeff. Right. Woo! And right about now, I'm going to cue the exit music. So if you want to pretend to headbang like a little bit. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening. This, this is the Dynasty Production. Let's get my show. All right, man.